In this video, we'll be covering how to import certificates on the Firebox. The first thing I'll go over is the source of the private key. Then I'll move into the available import options that the Firebox has. And then I'll finish things up with a demo on how to import these certificates onto the Firebox. So the first thing you need to determine is the source of the private key that was used to create the certificate that you are trying to import. And the private key could have been created from a third party source like one of your web servers or using the OpenSSL tool, or it could have been created by the Firebox if you had used the Firebox CSR wizard to create that because it automatically creates a private key for you for any CSR. When you go to import the certificate onto the Firebox, the wizard will present you with three different options. The first option is by far the most common because it is used to import any kind of CA certificates for any certificate function. That could be any VPN certificates, the Firebox web server certificate. So this can be used to import all of the prerequisites for any certificates. And then of course, if you do have any existing web server certificates from other devices, you can migrate those in and import them using this option. That's assuming, of course, you have the private key for that certificate you're trying to migrate over. When it comes to the proxy authority certificate, this is going to be used for any outbound content inspection. So this certificate must be a CA certificate. There's no way around that since this certificate will be used to re-sign certificates for any websites that you're visiting through HTTPS proxies. And because of this, you cannot obtain a certificate from any third-party public source because those CAs will not issue you a subordinate CA with their authority. So you would either have to use a local CA or use the CA on the Firebox in order to have a certificate that fulfills this role. You can only have a single certificate loaded for this proxy authority function, so just pick the one that's going to work best in your environment. When it comes to the proxy server certificate, this would be for any inbound content inspection for HTTPS and things like SMTP. Much like we mentioned in the general use, you can use any existing web server certificate. So if you have one on your email server, for example, if you can export that with the private key, you can import that onto the Firebox to use with the SMTP proxy. The proxy server certificate does allow for multiple certificates to be loaded because you can have, let's say, one for the SMTP proxy, and then you can have multiple for HTTPS, which is very useful with the HTTPS proxy domain name routing actions. That whole combination works really well there and the SMTP certificate would be the one loaded into the default slot during the import process. Before you go run the certificate import wizard, it's best to ensure you have all the prerequisites done. So collect all the files you're going to need during the import process. Again, if you created the private key somewhere else or you're migrating it from another device, make sure to get that. The signed certificate you're importing and any other CA certificates that are in that chain of trust. Of course, there will be at least one root certificate, but there could be any number of intermediate certificates in that chain. So make sure to collect everything that you need. And then you have to verify the type of encoding on those certificates. The Firebox requires these files to be in base64 also known as PEM encoding, during the import process. If you are creating your own or migrating something or you're purchasing something from a third party, if you ever have the option of getting PFX, that is the best option by far because a PFX file will contain the whole bundle of certificates and it can even include the private key and you don't have to worry about any kind of file format or encoding. You can just import that bundle. It's one step. The Firebox will extract all the necessary files out of it, and you're done. So if you ever have that option available, choose that one over the Base64 and dealing with a bunch of individual files. Here you can see I've collected the necessary files. I've got 
the signed certificate, I have the root certificate that issued it, and I have a private key because I created this private key on my own using OpenSSL, and I had used that to generate a CSR, get my certificate signed by the CA, so I'm all good there. Again, if you have used the Firebox's CSR wizard to start this process, you will not need the private key because that is already on the Firebox. You would only need your signed certificate and the root CA and any intermediates in the chain. So I will also verify the file encoding. You can see here I've opened the files in a text editor and when it has this type of header in each of the files, that is indicating that these are in fact base64 format. So I know these will work fine for the import process on the Firebox. If you do need to convert from a DER encoded format to the base64 PEM, you can use OpenSSL and run this command and just output the file you need and then verify it in a text editor that it looks like this and you should be good to go. Now I've opened up the Firebox System Manager. I clicked View Certificates, or you click this icon. It opens up the Certificates menu here. And if I click the Import Certificate button, this will start the Certificate Import Wizard. When I click Next here, these are those three options that I discussed a moment ago. I'm going to go with General Use because I'm importing a web server certificate in this example. So I'll click Next. It gives me the two different options. Again, if you have a PFX file, that is the best option because it is a one-step process. It has everything you need already in it. But I'm going to choose the Base64 option because that's what I'm using. And then in here it's asking me to find the certificate. So I will change this to CER. The file extension doesn't really matter a whole lot, but it's just filtering your view here. I will choose the web server certificate that I'm importing. This is the contents of that certificate. And now it's asking me for the admin credentials. Now it's saying that it needs the private key. Again, I created this private key on my own with OpenSSL. You would have the same prompt if you were migrating this from another device. But if you had used the Firebox Create CSR option right here, the Firebox would already have created a private key for you, and it would not be prompting you for this at this step. So in here, I have this key file. I'm going to go ahead and import that. And then now it's asking for the root or intermediate CA certificate. And it's telling you that you would need to import the root and then any intermediates. It's also telling me the common name on the CA certificate that it's looking for. So if you're confused, you can open up those certificates and view the contents of them. I'm going to change this again. There's the root CA I have, and I will click Next. And this is giving us a summary of which certificates it's going to import. It's going to import the CA certificate, as well as this web server certificate. The private key is kind of combined with this during the import, so it doesn't show it as a separate item, but this is everything we need. And if there were any other CA certificates needed during this process, the wizard would continue to prompt you for each required certificate along the way until the chain is complete. When you get to the screen, you know you have all the necessary pieces to have a working certificate set up. So I'll click Finish, and now I can see right here this is, in fact, the certificate that I created, and I've imported it successfully. I also have the CA certificate that is the authority that signed this web server certificate. So now the process is complete. To recap what we just went over, you will start off by gathering all the necessary files, and then you can verify the file encoding, make sure that everything is base64, and that you have the private key for that. If you do have the option of getting a PFX file, definitely use that whenever you can. 
And lastly, the Firebox Certificate Import Wizard will check your work, essentially. When you go to import these certificates, it will make sure that it has every certificate that is required for that chain of trust. So the root and any intermediates for the signed LEAF certificate that you're importing. And it will also ask you for the private key, should that be necessary. If you need any more information on certificates, use the WatchGuard technical search.